Wow, I'm working on that one. Okay, great. Here we go. So, uh, yeah, as we get started, uh, welcome to Casual Fridays, and uh, thanks Shiloh, thanks Farah for uh, taking up my invitation and just sharing uh, life for 20 minutes uh, with each other and, and with whoever, the hundreds of thousands of people out there in the interverse that come and see us. Um, I wanted to give everybody a chance to say who they are and uh, maybe even what had you be on this call. That would be interesting. Not so much about who you are, although that's interesting. It's very interesting to me because I love you both. But uh, also what had you be on this call? And I will let ladies go first. Uh, Shiloh, what, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what had you be on this call? Mm, thank you, Adam. Well, um, my background is business and human resources, and I have had the pleasure of living and working from the beach in Mazatlan, Mexico for seven years and doing that, the remote thing before even that was a thing. And I had hired full-time virtual assistant teams out of the Philippines again before, before that was a thing. So i um, happy to be back in Canada now, and I'm in employment services, which is smoking busy. As as we all know, with everything that's going on with the pandemic. So, yeah. And um, what had me be here today was just, uh, you know, I have a deep admiration and respect for you, Adam. We've had a lot of fun in the landmark education. And I am always just curious to be in the real and authentic conversations. Thanks, Shiloh. I so when I think about your theme for this, I was all in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So glad you're here today. How about you, Goro? Uh, so yeah, I've been uh, I've been in the digital marketing industry for the last 17 or so years. Um, uh, you know, started off just doing it for myself as a way to get to university, and then started an agency uh, just because uh, the market collapsed and uh, there was no jobs. So I figured I'd do my own thing <laughs> at that time when I when I graduated. So you know, started helping my my friends and my uncle and people and. Turned out an act for it, so the agency grew from there, and then um, really have a passion for educating. I could talk marketing all day long, so love just talking and teaching and, and uh, being on the cutting edge of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and you are cool. super talented at it. I, I can attest that <laughs> we work together. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and uh, as for the call, yeah, I mean, I've, I've uh, known you for a couple of years, uh, Adam, and it's been wonderful being able to work with you and the team at the TCC. And, uh, so the minute you mentioned this, I said, absolutely. I just love connecting with you, whether it's marketing, whether it's just having a chat. So we're here. Thanks, brother. Really appreciate your trust in me. So uh, as we uh, start to forge into uh, our uh, time together today, what, um, what's been going on this week? You know, for me, it's been a really uh, turbulent week. Uh, weather's been interesting. Had a couple good workout, uh, one with my son that was outstanding. And uh, then business wise, uh, it's, been, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. And then there's a news piece I wanna get to later, some weirdness uh, that I wanna talk about. I always love a little bit of weirdness. Uh, but what, uh, and we'll go in reverse order, what's been going on for you uh, this week, Cora? How's, how's the week been treating you? It's been surprisingly busy. And for whatever reason, it seems like about, oh, about two weeks ago, maybe a little bit less, about 10 days ago, it just seems like everybody's now starting to adjust to this new normal. And uh, we've been getting uh, just a, uh, an absolute deluge of requests to kind of work with people. And, and a lot of it on the education side, which was uh, something I've always been pushed towards, but avoiding. <laughs> So I education at all costs. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm so, totally learning ignorantly bliss, right? Yeah. Bliss out of ignorance. Get to yeah. education, start to become aware. It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's it. It's been really, really like I haven't really done a lot in terms of prospecting, you know, traditional stuff. Just a couple of appearances on, on interviews like this, but it's just been. Hey, I heard about you from so and so. Hey, I heard you from I'm like, okay, cool. That's so great. it feels feels like people are adjusting now. They're realizing this is even when we come back to normal, you know, the digital stuff is going to keep growing and becoming coming to the forefront. So it's been really, really busy, surprisingly. 
Yeah, you sound really good, and the word is out, man. The cat is out of the bag, as they say. Here they come. I guess. Good for you. That's awesome to hear. Awesome to hear. Yeah. How about you, Shadow? I bet you're, there's nothing really going on in your world, right? Like No. <laughs> well, um, on the work front, we're you know very busy. We've been connecting a lot with our clients. Uh, I'm with a, a government-funded workforce development program, so... It's free for participants, and we provide a lot of education around what it takes to be competitive in this current marketplace. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, there were a lot of factors even before the drop in oil prices and before COVID. And so, you know, we're, we're very busy, and I've been reaching out to employers as well because they've been dramatically affected. And um, there's just, I mean, the impacts are continuing to ripple. Um, you know, I worked remotely kind of out of my laptop bag from location to location anyway. So the transition to working from home has been okay, but I, you know, as an extrovert, I miss the people contact and, um, you know, we, I have, of course, zoom calls as I'm sure each of you do. <laughs> my life is filled with, with video calls these days. And still there's something about the, the in-person contact oh. that. Uh, yeah, I'm that I really, angry. I just miss. I, I crave that. Me too. And I've just noticed that um, in, the, in the last couple of days, both in on the work front as well as on the personal side with my family, it's like, oh, I miss that. I have two beautiful nieces and they're growing up every day. And, you know, one of them doesn't recognize me because she hasn't seen me in so many months mm. at six months old, you know, like, yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah, I'm just noticing that contact this week. Yeah, I was standing in line yesterday with my wife at Home Depot, and it was quite a lengthy line. And at first I approached her, I was like, oh my God, I got to line up and get into Home Depot. Like to line up to get into Home Depot. Anyways, as I'm standing in line, there's a variety of people, plus somebody I recognize from the neighborhood who I say hi to. There's two guys behind me that don't speak English, and they're speaking in whatever language they're speaking. And there's a variety of people around and they're having their little bits of conversation. It was awesome. I was, I, you know, the appreciation for the multiculturalism that is Canada, the just hearing somebody speak in a different language and only, I know they're six feet behind me, but it was awesome. I mean, just to turn around and look, not look like curious, but just look like appreciative, right? Like, oh my God. And then to get, that I'm surrounded by, it'd be about 20 people in line. Mm -hmm. And just, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> I call those the, the 10 and, moment. Yeah, to get that biofeedback, you know, a couple people just kind of avoid eye contact with you. <laughs> but just to have the dynamics of the, right? Like that real, organic, oh my God, this is awesome, full frontal, like just, Awesome. So I, I, I'm with you. Shut yeah, up. from I'm one human. I'm going out again today. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go find another line to stand in. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any experiences going out at all this week? Um, I, I have had um, one experience. I actually went out and had a social distancing visit with my parents. Um, oh. And, you know, that was very heartwarming. I am especially close with my mom and it was just, it did us both good just, you know, being sure. in the same space yeah. together. And it was good to see my dad. He had collapsed and been rushed to the hospital um, two weeks ago, being non-responsive due to a cardiac episode. And, you know, again, during COVID, it's, it's different because none of the family could go to the hospital. Really? Yeah, and he was stabilized and they ran tests and they got the test results and then they packed him up and and shipped him out the door ASAP. And so we went and got him when normally they would have kept him overnight. And yeah. in light of all of the concerns, like they, they literally just kind of had him wait on the street corner until we pulled up. And he's good now. Everything's- He is, yeah, thankfully he is. But uh, yeah, family is a Those connection. Good mm. How about mm. you, Gora? Any outings this week? Yeah, we, uh, we did a socially distanced Mother's Day thing. Right. Uh, uh, my grandma's around here and uh, my aunt as well. So uh, medical has a pretty decent, really long kind of a uh, space that we could sit around and everybody brought some food and kind of 
enjoyed uh, about an hour of just kind of connecting and it felt uh, it, it just felt normal again you know what I mean like it just felt wow this is this is something that we took for granted uh, what, right. eight weeks ago <laughs> right yeah yeah and now you get that taken for granted part for sure uh, just the simplest thing like hey I'd love to see you for a minute is is uh, it's just double now because uh, it was so you could you know you put things off and whatever before now it's like please yes let's do something <laughs> <You know? laughs> i really miss that so yeah that's that was our big thing other than that i live next to fish creek so i tend to try to get out and just do a walk every now and then it just keeps me sane but yeah totally yeah i noticed a ton of people what was it yesterday or the day before no the day before it was kind of nice and it was like there were kids on bikes i have never seen the neighborhood so alive <laughs> yeah. it's awesome right awesome and uh, i walk a lot like it, it's it's a, like almost a daily practice for me so to go out and see the neighborhood so alive and all that energy and kids and couples and pets and dogs and even people walking their cats that is <laughs> freaking awesome it's wild to watch. like if you get a chance man it's worth just like stopping and watching a person and their cat walk that is not like walking a dog. I've, I've tried. It, 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 you just, yeah, I've uh, tried too. I've not had that success. I'd be curious <laughs> to hear what the magic answer is. <laughs> it's it's just something to watch. Like I'm surprised there's, there's going to be videos showing up for sure. Stay tuned. I'm going to shoot one. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Um, what about in the news this week? You know, I received. Uh, there seems to be this. Um, I'll call it a collision. Uh, between uh, uh, the distortion of fact and the distortion of truth, the dilemma of, you know, containment and COVID and flattening the curve and respecting getting everybody healthy and maintaining distance and all that. And then the whole business thing and this, this what has become all of a sudden obvious, not obvious, but it's become start, the, there's a conspiracy <laughs> or there's like, uh, something going on and people are really getting reactionary. I, I was on the phone with two friends this week that were just like, you got to write your MP, you know, this is bullshit. We're getting suppressed. And, you know, then I think of the Monty Python thing, you know, help, we're being repressed. <laughs> <laughs> You're dating yourself. Just think, are you, what, are you, what are you guys seeing in the news? Like, are you in the news or what's going on there? I am, um, I'm not an avid news watcher and, and yet I, you know, I hear about the important things and I can go search strategically when I hear specific things to stay informed. And so that's kind of how I balance it. Cause I, you know, I find it can get overwhelming sometimes because of course the media is fixated on all the bad news and there are, you know, very serious realities to COVID, but there are amazing things that are happening too. Cool. And, um, yeah, and so for me, that you know, that's it's really interesting with the Calgary, you know, reopen of Phase One um, being delayed because we are considered a hotspot in Alberta, and all of the rippling effects from that. But um, we're not in Airdrie, by the way. We're, no, no, and my hairdresser's in Langdon actually, so I am all on board with some alternative <laughs> solutions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and there's you know significant business impacts here in the city. And, um, you know, and at the same time, it's, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I've noticed more reports popping up from, you know, the science community, the immunologists have spoken up um, more and more. And there's a lot more around, you know, the viral spread through, you know, airborne sources, not just through contact surfaces and, mm -hmm. and viral load and, and the impact of that. And so I'm just, you know, curiously watching how that plays out. And, um, you know, of course, how the different countries are dealing with each phase as they're moving through it so mm. yeah mm. I, I kind of watch from a global back down to a local and then yeah 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 yeah, yeah. as it you know dilates in and out yeah for sure yeah. how about you g yeah actually very similar to shallow where it's just basically looking at what different countries are doing to cope with this because there's such disparate examples everything from a complete shutdown to somewhere like sweden where it's well it's not you know it's not completely open but relatively yeah. open to kind of try and see uh you know who's doing what how's it impacting the entire overall 
health, society, business, because it's, it's a balancing act, right? I mean, uh, you, you kind of have to try and balance. You can't shut down something completely, but at the same time, there's a health risk to it. So Sweden was really interesting to me because I was looking at it yesterday, and they're somewhere in the middle in terms of how impacted they are, which was surprising because people are expecting it to be a lot worse. Not saying this is over. I mean, we yeah. still have a lot, of, a lot of ways to go. So, yeah, that's that's been the stuff that I was looking at this week. But, yeah, otherwise, I, I tend to stay away unless somebody's like, look at this thing, right? This is really important or something. Otherwise, I'm just kind of head down, focus on what I'm doing, and uh, uh, maybe check in once or twice a week to see what's going on. Yeah, I'm, I, I kind of keep the same rhythm. The only reason I knew about the not reopening mm -hmm. was because my son works at a restaurant. He was jacked about going to work and, you know, what's going to happen. And there's like a lot of excitement and anticipation. And then he came home early. I was like, what happened? And uh, he's like, well, they decided to not open. It. And so, you know, they had hired up in anticipation. But the announcement didn't come with enough forewarning. So the entrepreneurs and the restaurateurs actually, you know, it, it was, it was, everybody's rolling with it, but it wasn't, it wasn't handled very well. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know about it. He, he working there. He didn't know about it. And so he got cut and, and sent home early. Halfway through the, bring halfway through an the day. Right? Tuna pokey though. Like freaking awesome. <laughs> so mm -hmm. silver lining. Really great dinner last night. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, another thing of non-COVID related, okay? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the constraint in this one, the rule, if you will, you can't mm -hmm. talk about COVID pandemic, okay? But is there anything that has been triggered for you that you're curious about, wondering about? And one of the things my wife showed me this week I'd heard about it before, is river surfing. So you can go surfing on the Bow River. There are these, these uh, where, the, where the river kind of backflows on itself, like it hits like a pocket and backflows and creates like this wave. And you can actually, and there's these guys, you know, with a surfboard in wetsuit jumping and, and trying to hold the, that current because it acts like a wave. Oh, that is awesome. So I'm super curious, one, where it is, two, could I do it, three, has anybody started a rental program because I'm not going to take a, a full board and everything, or do I just show up and start saying, hey guys, um, uh, can I try it and see what happens? Like, I can see lineups for that, like, going on, because that would be so much fun to try. Anything that's hit you curiously uh, this week? Where you're like, hmm, wonder how that works. Wonder if I should take on that. Yeah, I have kind of have an interest in that. I know I'm putting you on the spot and, you know, not all of us process the same way. So you're looking internally and trying to figure it, find it. Uh, but is there anything that kind of went, hmm, I'm curious about that. I was, uh... Uh, somebody sent this to me. I'm not sure who, but uh, there's these. Uh, I was looking at these Muse headbands things, where uh, they apparently will measure your brain activity and then help you meditate better. Really? That was really interesting because yeah, I think it was my uncle who was like, "I'm going to buy one of these things." I'm like, "What is it? Like, what is this thing?" So it's apparently some headband yeah. device that you can wear. And it measures your brainwave activity. However, it does. I didn't really get too deep into it. Uh, but then the idea is it gives you feedback on the forehead. Yeah, like <laughs> you get feedback on kind of your state of mind if you're trying to meditate. And then apparently, if you're if you're kind of getting off track, it like it'll play like storm clouds and stuff. So it gets you kind of focused back in. Wow. Uh, apparently, it's. Feedback. It's all over the place. Silicon Valley is crazy about this stuff. So that was just intriguing because I'm really into meditation and, and things like that. And any you know technology that kind of marries that or makes it more effective is just really curious to me. So that was my uh, wonderment for the week so far. Huh, that is cool. Yeah, you know what? I will follow up with you on that because all right, me intrigued. 
<laughs> I, I, you know, if you end up getting the headband, then I want to I hear how it goes. This sounds very cool. How about you, Shiloh? Oh, that is, a, I really, I think that's so cool. I'm going to have to go look that I, Yeah, both of your ideas are so creative. I've not heard of either one of them. Um, you know, I got together with a, a girlfriend um, and did social distancing. Um, we went for a walk and then came back and had a really great visit. And, you know, as a stress relief project, um, she's taken up painting. And um, so we did some river rock painting. And as I was doing it, I was just thinking like, wow, I wonder what kind of cool little craft ideas that I could be doing with my nieces over video. You know, they're really, really little. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and so just getting back to, you know, bugs and worms and butterflies and leaves <laughs> and yeah. Um, so on a completely different end of the spectrum. It's that time of year. There is a, there's lots of kids in my neighborhood and there's a, uh, a group right directly across that look like they're, they're definitely preteen. I've gotten terrible at guessing people's ages, but I'm going to peg them somewhere between five and 10. And my daughter's going camping today with a bunch of friends. Uh, they're mm -hmm. doing this in place of grad. They found a private land, a uh, private landowner with all this field. And he said, sure. And so a handful of them are going out and going camping and doing the camping thing. So I was teaching her to set up the tent last night uh on the on the neighbor's driveway who is away and the kids got so curious about and they're like where are you going camping what why are you setting up the tent can we help like it was awesome <laughs> just so much fun right and they just stood there for about you know however long their attention span is you know mm -hmm. about 10 15 seconds asked a yeah. couple questions couldn't help so then they left yeah but the, my point is the time of year with spring and bugs and camping and rock painting. That's awesome, Shiloh. Really, really awesome. Well, also just with that age group and their energy and their presence and their wonder. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh, I can never have too much of that in yeah. my life. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Love the curious. Love mm. the curious. Um, as we, uh, as we wrap up here, I always like to give people a chance to speak on their professional behalf. Is oh. there anything that you would like to say uh, in terms of a professional tip for people that are out there marketing for of or digital marketing or seeking employment or trying to get a, a new gig going? Um, Anything you, you want to leave us with in terms of your final thoughts and a professional tip or advice? Um, there's, I know it's a trying time, but there's also never been a better time to put your message out there than now because the attention is there. You've got a, you know, a quote unquote, like a captive audience, if you want to call it that. For people that are really, A, there's more people, B, they're paying more attention because everybody's on their mobile device now. <laughs> And uh, to put your message out there, like if you were ever to even try to advertise now, the costs are down 80, 90 percent because all the big boys have pulled out. So, you know, I've found a lot of people that may not have had a budget before uh, are now able to put their message out. Everything from I've got a musician friend who teaches guitar. He's able to advertise and get people for social, socially distanced guitar lessons. And... <clears throat> Everything from there to financial advisors that I work with and all, everybody's just like, we, we've seen our, our ad costs, the lead costs drop by 80 to 90, 95% in one case. And gyms that are transitioning online, it's really interesting space to be in now to see yeah. how you can do things differently. And you can really put your message out there for so, so inexpensive that it's almost a crime not to try. <laughs> so that's just where I'm at right now. <laughs> Good news. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah, worthwhile. Uh, if I come up with something, I'm coming back to you, man. Sounds yeah, good. For sure. We'll figure something out. How about you, Shadow? Well, in, in this time of, you know, so many layoffs, I think the, the most important thing for people to remember is, you know, a job search can feel very um, isolating, um, but you don't have to do it alone. And there are so many resources and supports that are available that most people don't even realize. And um, it doesn't, it, yeah, it doesn't have to be an all by yourself 
uh, initiative uh, that can feel really daunting. And so if you have questions, reach out. I mean, feel free to send me a message on LinkedIn or you know, just do a search of what um, programs and supports and agencies and, that are already available that can actually make that process dramatically easier for you. Awesome. So great to hear. You know, it's been a pleasure. I always enjoy connecting with you two. I don't connect enough. So thanks for taking uh, the time this week. Uh, and I really do appreciate you uh, investing your trust in me. This will take a week to put up and uh, we will see you again soon. Thank you so much, both of you. Have a great, great weekend. And uh, yeah, stay awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Bye guys.